Interesting thing about our society over the last 5,000 years or so, we've codified women into two categories. Oh, someone's the door. I can tell something. <laughs> we've codified women into two categories. All women who have sex fall into one of these two categories, and then perhaps one of the branches underneath. But it's going to be very clear. All women are divided into one of these two. And I'm not going to tell you what they are right now, because I don't want the girls throwing their shoes at me. <laughs> two categories. First one I'm going to ask you, fellas, think about this for a moment. I'm going to describe a woman to you. She's a girl who has sex entirely because she enjoys it. She has sex with whatever guy she finds amusing to her at the time. She does it because she wants the guy to like her. Or she does it because she knows that she's going to feel OK with it. She knows she's going to have a good time. She does it, and everyone around would say she does it without any self-respect. This is a girl who gives it away without any concern for any future commitment or anything else. All right, and we have a very unpleasant word commonly used to describe such a girl. A girl who has sex without any thought of marriage or commitment or relationship. She exclusively has sex because she has a good time with it. And what do we call her? Slide. My type of girl. <laughs> An enlightened man. We call her a slut. Sorry, ladies, it's not my fault. It's what you'd call them to. That's true. Now, the thing is, all you guys love sluts, at least once in a while. <laughs> okay? But you've pretty much all been raised and culturized to despise sluts and hate them and fear them. No one ever had their parents say to them, stay away from sluts, they're bad, or perhaps some of you did. But you never really needed to, because in the same way as no one ever gets taught, don't eat your playmates, cannibalism is bad. There's so much media, so many jokes about missionaries getting eaten in cauldrons, that you don't ever have to be taught that. It's taught to you by society at large. Cannibalism is bad. Don't, don't do it. I'm pretty confident no one here ever got actually taught by their parents not to eat humans. <laughs> All right. Now, with this in mind, you all know cannibalism is wrong and bad and nasty, except it's still done all around the world, not in what we think of as Western cultures, but except maybe in Roman Catholic churches when they're doing communion. But for the most part, <coughs> hey, I mean, I've listened to the stuff they say. For the most part, cannibalism is very heavily <coughs> issued. They say, oh, stay away from it. It's not natural. Of course, it is natural. People don't eat other people because they've been taught not to. Not recently. For the last 10,000 years. By the same token, no one gets taught by their parents, stay away from sluts, but they know they're supposed to. Every guy says, well, of course I'd fuck her. I would marry her. <laughs> now, there's another type of woman. We've described firstly a woman <clears throat> who has sex with no self-respect. She gives it away. Now, there's another kind of woman. This woman has great self-respect. She charges for it. She never gives it away. She won't have sex unless she knows she's getting something for it. Be it travel or jewelry or a house over her head or food for her children or lifetime of support. What's a word for a woman who gets paid for sex? Guys, anything? Whore. Whore works? Prostitute works? Whore, whore works? works? Yeah. What up in your life? Now, there's, there, yeah. there are two types. So we've got, we've got sluts and we've got whores. Now, we've got two different types of whores. We've got the low status whore, the itinerant whore. We're going to call her a hoe. <laughs> <laughs> the hoe, not just a garden of women, the hoe is a woman who says, well, yeah, sure, he's going to take me to Hawaii. I'll fuck him. Or he's bought me a couple of great dinners and some drinks, and he's given me a bunch of rails of cocaine, or 
He bought me this ring, and so she'll have sex with it. So that's an itinerant, occasional, on-demand whore. Or maybe it's a girl that says, 300 bucks. <laughs> Nothing wrong. That's just one role. Then there's the high-status hoe, or high-status prostitute, high-status. We have a four-letter word used to describe this one, too. This is one we call a contract whore. <laughs> there we go, a wife. A nasty four-letter word <laughs> used to describe a woman <coughs> who makes a contract to sell her sexuality to just one guy in exchange for a lifetime of support for herself and her children. She doesn't even have to have sex with the guy after she's made that transaction. <laughs> and fairly often, she won't. <laughs> Everyone hear what I'm saying? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Now, sorry to say that all your moms are probably one or the other type, either sluts or whores. <laughs> I mean no disrespect. I fuck both kinds. <laughs> probably not any of your mothers. I'm not going to take the time to check. <laughs> okay? But I'm not even going to check my phone. Eh? But the point is, guys, society makes this true. <clears throat> So now let's come back to that first kind of girl. You know, that one we've all been trained to hate. This girl is called a slut. And we all go, ooh, a slut. It's got such a bad sound to it. Although, fun to hang out with her for a little while. But ooh, a slut. Such a bad thing. Girls have been so ingrained with hatred of themselves if they believe they're being slutty that they'll go way out of their way to stop themselves from doing things they'd like to do until some way they can find to make it not count. <laughs> okay. When they can make it not count, they'll do it. Because there's really only one thing that's keeping them from doing it. And so they're going to feel badly about themselves. Okay. And what is it going to feel badly about? I'm going to tell you guys, they're going to feel badly because society has taught them that if a woman does what she wants to do for her own reason, because she enjoys it. She's going to have a good time with it. She has no self-respect. Try and process that one for a minute, guys. If a woman does what she wants to do for her own reasons, she has no self-respect. Can you process that? I can't. I've been trying for a long time. Those things don't make any sense to me at all. But somehow, society is very adamant about it. If a girl exercises free will, she has no self-respect. What? Go ahead. Well, <clears throat> absolutely. Okay. But it's also in every other part of life. If a girl decides she wants to be a professor, move to another country, and her mother says, aren't you going to get married and raise a family? And she says, no. Her mother will condemn her. Society says, how selfish are you? You're not going to have children? Excuse me, guys, but as far as I can tell, having children is the most selfish act there is. Certainly for men. Clone yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> having children is the most selfish act you can do. Hey, once you've done it, it sure is a heavy burden. But you decide you're going to pay that burden forever because you want it that bad. This is part of the reason it's so important for us all to believe that our child is our own. Because we've decided to pay for that burden for a long, long time. Because we want that ego gratification of cloning ourselves. Anyone have a problem with that as an idea? Go ahead. Is, problem, is it possible to be not selfish when it comes to Well, I want, you, I want you to think about that. I want you to ask, ask that for me, okay? I believe that every action you take throughout all of your life, even something as nice as helping an old lady across the street, is a selfish act. Everything you do, you do because it rewards you in some way, either an immediate material way, or a sense of self way, a sense of happiness for having done something. Everything you do, you do self-servingly. 
Uh, hey, hey, I'm not even trying to get to that point. I'm saying it not as a negative thing. Everything anyone does is done selfishly. People who think that altruism means they're doing it for the common good are not paying attention to the fact that doing it for the common good makes them feel good and they know it. Okay. This comes back to that very beginning thing. When you do nice things for people for no reward and you get the reward of feeling good about yourself, good on you. You've done it selfishly. And that's great. But selfishness, like sluts, has a very bad reputation. But in truth, self-interest, especially what we call enlightened self-interest, or long-term selfishness, is a very, very good thing. It's the reason we do all the smart things we ever do in our lives. Go to college. It's not a short-term selfish thing, it's a long-term selfish thing. Right? Work in your job, doing a really hard job, knowing you're going to succeed eventually. That's long-term selfish. And good for you. So the answer to your question is, no, there's no way you can have children and not have it as a selfish act if you're involved in their existence. You can have children as a selfish act that's short-term selfish if you just don't bother to tell the girl you're coming, don't pull out, don't worry about whether she's on the pill, and then fuck off. That's a pretty selfish act. But then I'd hardly say you've been anything other than a sperm donor. You haven't really fathered a child in any significant way. What of the concept of actually being in love with a girl and actually having that child as an expression of love as a concept? Uh, absolutely completely fair and completely selfish at the same time. How so? Well, let's see. I love <coughs> Violet over here like I've never loved anyone before. She's fantastic. And if I thought that she and I could create a baby that would be a combination of the best attributes of she and I, and it would be a wonderful thing we could do for the world and a wonderful thing we could do to cement our relationship, and I thought, okay, let's do it. Is it a self Fair enough. Doing it 100% with my own personal happiness, satisfaction, and gain. Now, aside from whether that's likely, it ain't. Aside from whether that's likely, I come back. Yes, having children is a very selfish act. <coughs> Not that selfish is a bad thing necessarily. But you're not doing it out of a sense of duty to society, no matter who tells you you are. Now, it survives, that's what the cable's for. So, we have these two types. We have this woman who's been trained her whole life by her parents that being a slut is bad. Not only that, she doesn't just think it's bad if men think she's a slut, because in truth, if men think she's a slut, who gives a shit? She doesn't care. By the time she's reached the point in her life where she's having a good time with sex, it's nothing to her if men think she's a slut. The truth is, men describe women as either a slut or a bitch. A slut is a girl who fuck anybody, and a bitch is a girl who fuck anybody but me. Yeah. <laughs> now, girl doesn't care. Okay. Now. The girl cares if other girls think of her as a slut, because they'll hate her. They'll despise her, and they'll let her know. Because a girl who allows herself to be seen as a slut, who behaves in a way that people would think of as slutty, huh. damages other girls. It damages their viability in a marketplace in which they're working as hoes. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy has no worry, in a serious sense, if daddy is fucking a hoe, or a professional street hooker, or an escort. She won't be happy about it, but she'll get over it. But if daddy is fucking Rachel, the next door neighbor's 20 year old daughter who's been putting herself through college doing babysitting for us from time to time, that's a home wrecker. She's a slut. And she's a serious threat to the power base. Because after all, mommy needs for daddy to be paying her for sex. Even if he's not getting sex, she needs for him <laughs> to be paying her for her for sexuality, for exclusive domain. If he's getting sex for nothing, this is terrible. You can't be allowed to continue. 